Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting stories. So the first one is about Big Ramy. Yesterday, after I published my video, I saw this uh, statement, this announcement from Big Ramy on his profile. He is not gonna be attending the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing once again. Apparently, this time around, it is because visa issues, he can travel to the US, and he's not gonna be guest posing. Is this the end of Big Ramy's career? That is the real question. We all know that two years ago, 2022, he was the reigning Mr. Olympia, and he was supposed to appear at a Pittsburgh Pro guest posing, and he just didn't show up, he didn't say anything, he had no excuse, he just wasn't there. And we all know what happened at the Mr. Olympia, he was from first, he went down to fifth, and then at the Arnold Classic, where he was much improved as well, he was fourth, and then later, 2023, he did the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing, and uh, he didn't compete that year, he didn't do the Mr. Olympia, this year, he said he is going to compete again, obviously at the Mr. Olympia, and he was also announced to be one of the guest posers at this year's Pittsburgh Pro, and now he's saying he can't do it. At least this time around, he kind of explained why, but does it really matter? Do those guys really care? Let me show you a part of uh, the Menace podcast where Phil He talks about Big Ramy. Does he have another shot, or is you think that the train is, is gone? See, what I think and what, where they're going are two different things. Yeah. You so, know, I didn't expect him. I didn't expect the, the, the 2022. I didn't have him fifth. Right. But to go along with history, still Mr. O, man. Like, come on, dude. Fifth. Right. right. That's bad. He does the Arnold Classic in what, 2023? Yeah. So he, literally literally got, four months later. Or five months. Four, four months. Four or five months later, right? And he got and fourth four, or fifth, fourth. Four. Why? Why did he get fourth, bro? I thought he spanked everybody. He walked out. I was like, this is, I mean, I was like, this is a joke. Like, this is, it's a wrap. So I don't know where he goes from here. I think some things will answer themselves come in Pittsburgh. Some things are answered now because Big Remy is not showing up at Pittsburgh. So this probably means, you know, the end of his career. I mean, yeah, the judging should be fair, but there is some politics involved. I'm sure at some level. Did I have him 5th at a Mr. Olympian, 4th at the Arnold Classic? I can see it, sure, but I wouldn't complain too much if he was higher. If he was like, I don't know, 3rd at a Mr. Olympia, or I don't know, 2nd at the Arnold, or something like that. And judging by the history, as Phil says, a lot of times when Mr. Olympia loses, he just goes down one place, he, he plays a second, and that's the way they lose. Even when they didn't deserve to place that high, that's usually how it goes. When a Mr. Olympia loses, he loses by one spot, by placing second. And even years after they lose their title, you guys probably remember 2007 Mr. Olympia, where Ronnie placed fifth, and just below him was Dennis Wolf. This is only one shot, you can't gather much from this one, but if you find a video, you will see that there were so many glaring weaknesses on Ronnie's physique, and yet he got this fifth place, and I think it was a gift, it was a sign of respect. It was even more obvious when uh, Jay Cutler beat Big Remy at 2013 Mr. Olympia. This was three years after Jay won his last Mr. Olympia title, he lost 2011, 2012, he didn't compete, he came back 2013 and he was significantly downsized, he lost quite a lot of body parts, Big Ramy was, as you can see, a freaking monster at that time, and uh, Jay Cutler beat him. Everybody knew that it wasn't right, but that's how it goes, when these guys have a legacy like Jay, like Ronnie, or really anybody else who won multiple titles, is it right or wrong, we can talk about that, but the fact is, that's how it always was, until 2022. Did he deserve to place higher? It's also up to debate, but if he did his part, if he paid his dues, I think he would still place higher at these shows, Arnold Classic and Mr. Olympia, maybe he would play second at the Mr. Olympia or third, I'm not saying he deserved to win, but you know, to go from first to fifth and then fourth even at the Arnold Classic, yeah, it's got something to do with missing that Pittsburgh Pro guest posing and he's missing it again this year. Is he ever gonna, you know, be able to dominate, to win shows, big shows like that? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Whatever you guys think, tell us down below. 
All right, the next thing we got is a little physique update from Derek Lansford. And I told you guys, this guy is going to get a little bit more lean, more dry for the Pittsburgh Pro Gas posing. And I think he did that. I mean, maybe it's just different lighting or something, but I think he looks harder and a little bit more defined at this, at this shot right here. Does it really matter what he looks like? Well, not really. But it's, it's definitely a good thing to look presentable, at least. It's not great to show up, uh, for example, the way uh, Sean Roden, may he rest in peace, was showing up at guest posings. Uh, that's definitely not the best thing for someone's career, but uh, looking at Derek, I think he's taking this a little bit too far. I mean, is he really maintaining this kind of conditioning this entire offseason? I doubt that. I think he did a little bit of a mini-mini cut or something like that. Because, as we all know, Derek is basically the king of guest posings. I mean, he always looks freaking amazing at those shows. Because he kind of looks even better in a way uh, when he's in the offseason. Because he has that crazy leg fullness. He doesn't have that on stage. But he does have it in the offseason. And he's always in great conditioning. The thing with him is... He always stays very, very dry from behind. And you saw it on stage. He's definitely in better conditioning from behind than from the front. So if he shows, like, striated glutes and, like, uh, lines in his back when he's guest posing, that looks really impressive. And that, you know, makes people talk about him. It leaves a really good impression uh, on judges and everybody, really. The thing is, he is the Mr. Olympia, the reigning champ. And also in the caption of this post, he says... See you at Pittsburgh Pro Guest Posing. So he's officially doing it today, actually. And I'm sure this is basically like a part of the reason why they chose Derek as the Mr. Olympia. I mean, I'm not saying he didn't deserve to win it. I'm saying it was really close between him and Hadi. I think Samson was also in the mix. Those top three guys were really close. They had a couple of callouts. And I think if they really wanted to, they could have chosen Hadi. It wouldn't be a problem, but... They picked Derek because they know Derek will travel the world, he will promote the sport, and he will do appearances like this one. And he's doing it, and I think he's going to have an advantage at the Mr. Olympia again. As long as nobody knocks him down, as long as he doesn't come in off, he has a really good chance of winning. Samson also is a great ambassador, and he's going to do the guest posing as well, but he is not going to look his best. As he says in his post, he was 8 weeks off. 8 weeks off and he just started now. So, you know, Derek doesn't look like he is off of anything. So, Derek is going to destroy Samson at his guest posing. So, that, I think all that plays a part. A little bit of a part, but it does. We'll see how much. We'll see at the Mr. Olympia. Now, as far as Derek's physique right here, yeah, great shape, uh, great conditioning, legs looking full. However, I mean, I don't see any crazy changes from last year. He probably doesn't want to get any bigger. He's probably going to try to maintain what he's got, to keep his midsection tight, and to just maybe improve in conditioning a little bit here and there. And, you know, just by keeping this size for a longer time, it probably means more is going to stick once he diets down. So he already won the Mr. Olympia. He's already basically there in terms of development. Should he get better? Well, considering what Hadi might bring, I think it will be definitely the smartest thing to improve, just in case. And maybe he's going to be a little bit better. I was kind of expecting him to leap forward in terms of development once again this offseason, but I don't, I don't see that happening. I think he's going to look probably similar, hopefully with a little bit better conditioning. Is it going to be enough with uh, his status, let's put it that way, compared to Hadi's? Huh, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe not, maybe yes. Physique-wise, I think Hadi's going to be better. But is he going to be that much better for the judges to ignore how good of an ambassador Derek is? I don't know, I don't know. You guys tell me what do you think. Alright, next up we got some New York Pro talk. So, first off, we got a little physique update of Martin Fitzwater. And it seems like he improved his conditioning even more from the Detroit Pro. And at the Detroit Pro, it seemed like he could have been like 10% leaner or like 15% max. He was already very, very good. But yeah, he could have been a little bit lower in body fat percent. The peak was perfect. I mean, the lighting was really good as well. But the peak was good. He was full. He was conditioned. He was improved from the previous year quite a bit. But he could have been a little bit leaner. And I think he's working on that. And I think he improved it. As you can see in this video right here. Now, the question is, where can he place at the New York Pro? Can he, for example, challenge Nick Walker for the title? No, no, absolutely not, 100% not, but is he the favorite to be second? 
In my opinion, yes. And uh, I wanted to answer the question that Fuller asked on his podcast. I was watching the latest episode yesterday and I wanted to answer the question so badly. Unfortunately, I couldn't. I was just listening. But now I'm going to answer it right here. First, let me play the question that Fuller asked. If you had to pick who's going to compare with Nick the most and who's going to be the talk of the show after the show is done, out of those guys that are going to be in that first call out, we all know they can flip flop. Well, I don't think anyone. I don't pick? think anyone. I don't think anyone other than Quinton really can be the talk of the show, really, because they've all been seen on stage already. Like, if you want, you can watch the podcast and uh, hear the rest of it. But basically, the foot was asking who can be, who can also be the talk of the show uh, along with Nick, of course, and. I wanted to just answer it simply, nobody, nobody, that's the answer, that's just it, nobody can be the talk of the show uh, except for Nick Walker, I think Nick is gonna dominate everybody so much, it's not even gonna be funny, nobody's gonna compare to him, and that's the truth, I guess these guys are trying to create some sort of hype maybe, but, you know, it just doesn't make sense, and they also talked a lot about Quinton Naraya, who does look amazing, sure, who has really good frame, but really, I mean, this guy is like six foot one, six foot two, and, you know, he doesn't have, like, the most muscle, and, you know, he made progress, sure, he's gonna be definitely much different from the previous year, he competed 2022, but, like, did he completely change his physique? Is this gonna be, like, a completely new version of Quinton? I don't think so, I mean, I don't see it. Yeah, he's definitely improved, but... Even last time when he competed, he wasn't just... He wasn't that good. Let's be real here. He couldn't even beat Joel Thomas last year at, I think, Vancouver or Toronto, something like that. You know, it was a really weak lineup and Quinton couldn't beat him. The biggest thing with Quinton... Also, he didn't... He couldn't even beat Kamal Algarni at Tampa Pro, who was, you know, like, three times smaller than him. The thing with Quinton is, like, his back is really, really shallow. And, like, from the front, his quads are just not as thick, as massive, as round as some of the other big bodybuilders. And did he improve in those regards? Sure, he improved. But did he improve that much, you know, to challenge guys like uh, Martin Fitzwater, Tony Burton, or, if you ask me, even uh, Beef Stew? Honestly, personally, I can see him probably beating Angel Calderon and battling against the Beef Stew for that fort. But my top three is Nick Walker, then Martin Fitzwater, and then Tony Burton. Maybe those two guys can switch order, but I don't see this guy, Quinton, in the top three. Yeah, sure, he might be the talk of the show later because he's so different, he's so tall, he's so wide, and he has a really beautiful physique and so on, but... To beat these guys, I think he needs to be a little bit better. I mean, he can win a pro show this year, I think so, but, you know, top three at the New York Pro, I think that's a little bit too much for him this year. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm completely wrong, we'll see in a week, but that's the way I see it right now. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.